Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And this is actually take two of a video talking about how conventions are no longer necessary. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the Nintendo Direct, some of the, uh, the big announcements from Nintendo Direct, but we're also gonna talk about how Marvel is skipping Hall H this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting because this reminds me of the situation with E3 where you know, there wasn't enough interest in these video game companies making all their big announcements at E3 and Nintendo, you know, has the direct and they don't need E3. And how long until all these studios realize we don't need to go to San Diego Comic-Con anymore? Right. Because it doesn't do anything for us. No, it's just know? a big time waste and a money spend. Right, right. It, it's not like it used to be 10 years ago. Where now it, you might get quizzed like, what's wrong with you? You might get grilled. I mean, I have to wonder. I mean, we talked about before. You know, with Marvel, last year it was all about pumping up the movies that came out this year that bombed. You know, so now they're probably like, yeah, we're not going to do panels. We're not going to let people ask questions. Just here's the trailer. Go see the movie. And again, the, the money. The money is a huge issue because all these studios are not making money. And uh, you know, reportedly HBO and Universal, they're not gonna be going either. That's the rumor, but it, it's not necessary. So we're gonna talk about uh, more fun things like some of the announcements at uh, Nintendo Direct. And uh, yeah, so before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woo and um, yeah, so before we get into the games we're looking forward to, that Nintendo announced at the Direct, um, you know, we might be able to talk about just where conventions are at for artists. Like, is it yeah. even worth doing them anymore? I don't know. Like, I know we used to go and set up at conventions. Um, and as conventions became more and more like celebrity petting zoos, then they've been about like um, being about indie comics, indie art. It, it, it's not worth it. I mean, in a lot of them, the prices keep going up to pay for all the celebrities and people just can't afford it anymore. Like I know a convention I used to do around here in Altoona and we used to do it all the time and we aren't going to it anymore because what it, the returns were dwindling. But people were upset because they like they apparently raise the table prices significantly. I know we used to do Steel City Com. I used to go there all times to go shopping. And it's getting so busy with the celebrity guests, you can't even walk, let alone shop. And definitely, I feel bad for the vendors because people used to go there looking for the vendors and now they're there looking for the celebrities. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's really, I, I can't recommend, I'm going to be honest, current year, I can't recommend young artists go to conventions and table with the expectation of making money. It used to be back in the day that that was the way to do it. We did it for years. I mean, we made a good chunk. Most of our, you know, comic book money actually came from conventions, mm -hmm. but I can't say that that's going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't think it's going to work. And I think we're going to see attendance dwindles well because people are going to be like, there's nothing I'm getting from this convention that I can't get online. Or we're going to see a lot of conventions, I think, thin out. We're not going to have as many. I mean, I know like five or six years ago, it was like peak convention, even here in Pennsylvania, there were so many damn conventions. Yeah, but I think know? the pandemic weed that out. But the problem now is that when you have an event, everybody goes to these events and and you just can't move. Like I know New York Comic Con before the pandemic was terrible. These yeah. different events, they've gotten so big and, and as little ones dried up, everybody can't go to the big ones. You can't even walk. So it's a bad experience. Like when the line for the bathroom is longer than some of the lines for celebrities, people aren't going to come back. Yeah. And I think a lot of these studios and gaming places and stuff are like, why spend the money? And if people are just mad about it, why bother? Yeah. Yeah. And so Nintendo, they were kind of ahead of the curve. I mean, they, they started doing their direct, uh, at, which basically replaced their presence at E3, I think. And they're just like, yeah, we don't even need to, don't even need to go. Well, a lot of these places in like Marvel, they can ignore people online. If you're there and they're in your face, you can't yes. like, you can't just like, oh, delete, mute, mute, block. Block. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. So, look, Nintendo's having a really good year. A lot of people, you know, pumped about the Mario movie. They were, they announced a lot of Mario games, uh, many of them remakes, you know, but but uh, there's a lot of Mario coming this year, right before Christmas, too. Yes, I know. I'm already making a list for you and our son. I'm like, ooh. So we got uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, which is a new 2D style Mario game. The side scroller type thing. Side scroller. Uh, actually looks like a lot of fun. Now, first, it does look cute. At first, I was like, I wasn't really sold on the graphics because they look kind of flat even compared to like 
new Super Mario Brothers Wii mm-hmm. and or Wii U, and I was kind of like, eh, you know, it looks like a Flash game, but no, it actually looks pretty good. We got. I think it's Mario. cute. I like it. Um, I, I like how there's different things that reminds me of like Mario Three, Super Mario Three, and yeah. some of the some of the different games. See some Mario World in there. Yeah. See some. I actually I see some uh, uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. You can see like different too, influences and how they play. You know, they, they use them in the game. I think that's very cool. This one was completely unexpected. Now, I'm sure people that, that follow Nintendo a lot closer than we do are like, oh, my God, how did you not see this coming? Uh, Super Mario. You were very R- excited. Yeah, I was surprised. I'm like, wait, they're doing Super Mario RPG. Yeah, they are. And they're remaking it. And I hope it's longer because it was a very short game. See, exactly but- what happened was I was going through the Twitter announcements on, on Nintendo and Squid King was here. And then he saw the, the RPG. He goes, oh, my gosh, go, dad, dad, you got to get in here. This is what you're going to want to see. And then he was correct. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, I was cool. excited. I was excited. Um, WarioWare, again, I, I've never been into the WarioWare I don't games. care. Hey, but it's Detective Pikachu. We got Detective Pikachu. So a lot of the old standbys, right? So we got to get... Pokemon. Pokemon, Pokemans, Pokemans. Now, they, they some of the games, they didn't really... Uh, well, we're going to be much. getting a new Princess Peach game next year. Yes. And I'm excited because we're getting Luigi's Mansion... Dark Moon for Switch because I love Luigi's Mansion the first one. I did not play the second one because I did not want to play on a 3DS. So I am excited that it's going to be on Switch. Metal Gear Solid Collection yes. coming out. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Amiibos, Amiibos, of course. We've got Amiibos. Warrior Wear. We saw that Pikmin Four. Oh yeah, that Pikmin. Was, yeah. They didn't put that there as one of the top announcements on on the Verge. That's weird. Well, I don't think it was. Uh, people were going to be surprised by. I'm not like a huge Pikmin fan. No, I'm not either. I, but I, it's, it's it's okay. Cute. It's cute. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mario Kart Eight is still chugging along. Some new but courses. But it's got a new course. A new yay. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon Remaster. So they're basically going, oh, that's cool. This will make Squid King very happy. Vampire Survivors is one of his favorite games. So it's coming to Switch with a couch co-op, which is cool. But yeah, so it's like every Nintendo game ever, they're just like remaking it. And, and is that the one he used to play all the time? On the, on, on, is that the one that he... On the PC. Yeah. yeah that was that time. one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, was, yeah. He's going to love that. Uh, Dragon Quest Monsters. Let's see what else we got. This one I'm excited about. Another two. So we got a 2D... A 2D Mario, and we've got a 2D Sonic game coming out, and they both look good. Mm-hmm. Like, that doesn't happen very often. They both look When's good. When's the Sonic one out? Uh, that comes out. Fall. I think, yeah. Okay, so I've got quite the list going on for you for Christmas. Anyway. Uh, Arkham Trilogy coming to Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure how that's going to look. This one you were excited about. Yeah, so uh, this is actually one of, my, one of my favorite PS1 RPGs. It's pretty hard. Uh, Star Ocean, the second story. Love that game. Uh, one of the few games I got I got legit stuck on, and I had to restart the game. I got to, I'm trying to remember, it's been years since I played, but I got to a, a, like an ice cave, and I saved it, and I couldn't get out of the cave because my guys were too weak, and that was, I, I always make sure, so if you're playing any kind of a JRPG, always make sure you have multiple save spots, right? Before you enter the dungeon, inside the dungeon, and then after you beat the dungeon, if you can do it, uh, because I basically overwrote my main save file and I got stuck and I had to restart the game. And it was like 30 hours I had in that game. Sorry. Because there was that a lot was of pre, crafting and pre, stuff. pre me. That was. That was um, uh, PG, pre-geeky. Pre-geeky, but uh, it was a really good game. A lot of crafting. Uh, you could cook in this game. It was like really ahead of its time. It was really cool. I know they remastered the first one for Switch too. And I think I bought it, but I didn't have a chance to play it. I got it as a download for like seven or eight bucks. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely going to have to check that one out. So um, all kinds of games coming out. It's so weird because everybody's like, where's Switch too? And I don't think it's, I don't think it's anywhere. Were, wait, wait, Just Dance 2024. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's been around so long. I can't. Yeah. I can't really picture. Actually, the, the best system for playing Just Dance on was the Xbox 360 because you could actually, could actually read your body. I hate playing it with like the remotes yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's true. You know, but um, yeah. So it's, it's really interesting to see. And I, oh, this one I thought you would like, actually like. But I like playing with the animals because you're so yes. cute. Yeah. God, look, there's so many games coming out. And so, yeah, I don't think a Switch 2 is anywhere anywhere to be found any, anytime soon. Um, so here's the thing, right? And, and again, back back to this. People are really excited about these games. People are really excited about every Nintendo Direct. And they can get people excited to buy their products, buy their games, without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars even to go to E3 to do effectively the same thing. Right. So why would you do it? Why would you disrupt your work week? You know, because these conventions take weeks, months 
to plan, why would you do that? Why would you give some third party the money and have to deal with the hassle of just everything when you can you can just beam it in from your HQ? And that's what I think what's going to happen. I mean, in the case of Marvel, they've got D23. They'll probably save their, their big announcements for that. But everybody's got to be looking at this. And I think that's the one takeaway from the pandemic. Studios are looking at this like we don't have to spend all that money no. to do these conventions anymore. And then Marvel, yeah, they're they're, they're just going to have a table there. They're not going to have these big things that you know. But they're doing that that big uh, gala thing. Oh, uh, that the hell, X Men yeah, Hellfire Gala. Stupid. But you know, it's it's not at the convention. It's at a location outside the convention. Yeah. So I'm sure they probably worked some kind of deal out with yeah. it, so it's less expensive. But you know, they're making a presence, but they're not making it like their big thing. Now, one year they saved all their announcements for D23, but I don't know, was D23 this year? Uh, I don't know. I thought they like started doing it annually, did uh, they? All right, so it's 2024 because they were bad because they did it every year for a couple of years. Now they're going back to every other year. Yeah. Yeah. So they, so that doesn't make sense because they did, I know in the past they didn't do as much because they were saving for D23. Yeah. But that's not the case this year. So are they hiding? I, I think, I think they're hiding. I think they're, I they think nothing to announce, which is even scarier. I think it's all the way, I think, yes. I, I honestly think what's going on is yes. The answer is yes. We've got these companies, they're hurting for cash. Because mm -hmm. it's expensive. It's very expensive. This is a very easy cut. We saw this with DC Comics too. They cut going to San Diego Comic Con completely. Now, Marvel's going to have a presence, I guess, on the show floor. They're just not going to have. The spot, which is expensive. Right, which is still expensive, but it's not going to be, they're not doing the big presentation. Yeah, they're probably hiding. They probably don't have much to announce we don't know what the future of marvel is at this point it's all up in the air all the movies have been pushed back a year right and the big presentation would be like you have to pay the celebrities to show up yes you know and all that in the stage yeah and um you know so we've got that i think they're hiding it's just it's just such a no-brainer so what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a domino effect so what's going to happen is we're, we're not going to have these big announcements at the conventions anymore, which means we're not going to have people going to the conventions to watch the, the big announcements. And then other vendors aren't going to go because there are no crowds. And well, there's crowds, but they're not there for them. They're there for the celebrity petting zoo. Celebrities. Now, there were a couple of comic book vendors. Uh, I think one was Mile High Comics. I'm trying to remember a couple of years ago. had a big thing about how they've been vendors at Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, since pretty much the beginning. And they didn't see a point in going to Comic-Con anymore because it wasn't about comic books. Mm -hmm. And and the same with um, you know anybody that's going to like Artist Alley or whatever. It's like, unless you're selling prints, people just aren't interested. Right. And, you know? and I mean, I remember in Concept View specifically, they used to do Steel City. It was about toys. It was a toy show. Yeah. And now there's toy vendors there, but it's it's overrun by the celebrity petting zoo. And that's one one reason, like, we don't go to a lot of conventions, but we were excited last year. We went to PowerCon uh, in Ohio, and I love that because it was actually a convention about what it was supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And the celebrities that were there were directly tied into the toy industry. Mm -hmm. All the panels were about the toy industry because that's what the show was. And it was so... Nice to go to a show that was just centered on on that. What it was supposed you know, to be about. What it was supposed yeah. to be about. And um, we're just, I think, you know, all of this together, I think the pandemic basically just broke conventions forever. I don't think they're ever going to come back the way that they were before. I think there will be fewer of them. Now, I don't think they're going to disappear completely. But the, uh, the value proposition is just not there for most mm -hmm. people. So we're going to see more of this. I think we're going to see more big companies just noping out, doing their own thing or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We got to wrap it up? Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.